put this. This high. Yeah, no, this was like this big. Yeah. And small as it be, one is solid stainless steel and one of those augers, if um, if the shaft break, one of those augers at the last price was twenty five hundred dollars. And that's like general across the board for almost every manufacturer. Because there is only one company that makes that for every single ice machine manufacturer. The, the whole thing is, guys, um, <coughs> a lot of these specialty parts for these ice machine, they're made by, they're not made by the ice, ice machine manufacturer. They're sent out to be made by a specialized manufacturer who specializes like in stainless steel and who specializes in welding stainless steel or fusing stainless steel to copper. And that happens only in Germany. So all of these cylinder is wrap the copper tubing for the e that represents the evaporator coil is wrapped very close around that stainless steel <coughs> cylinder and is fused on. And only in Germany do they have that technology. So that's why that section of the ice maker is the most expensive. They only do that in Germany? Only Germany has the technology right now to fuse stainless steel and copper without any problem. Come on, when it comes to engineering metal, Germany is the best, regardless, regardless whether they were dumb enough to start two world wars. I'm not saying that they're not, I'm saying, I know German engineering is really good. I'm, yes. I'm just surprised that they're yes. the only ones with the technology to do that. No, I'm not surprised because, you know, they had the technology to do things that nobody else ever thought about. And it was sitting in in a hibernation for the last since World War One or two, and now they're discovering the depth of German technology. You know, but Germany had some of the most brilliant engineers, and they still do. You know, a lot of people from my country, when they get scholarship to do engineering, they choose Germany. Of course, and they got to learn the language first. And German language is English language that sounds like Jamaican. So. No, <laughs> <laughs> my that's why my German grandfather always used to say think. Yes. You know, it's kind of a very musical language, you know. So, thing. so like I said, production harvest continuous. There's no um, thing. Now, these ice makers, they're always sitting on a storage bin. Always. Um, except when you have a bank of ice machines that has um, one common storage bin where they do packaging. What they have is the ice dropping in a chute, and the chute may have an auger or something to move the ice into the common area to begin the package process. <clears throat> and it's, it's as elaborate as you want it to be. Now we see this reservoir here, always has sensor, fill sensor and low water level sensor. When, it, when it, there's no water in this, the low water level sensor shuts down the machine because you do not want this auger to freeze in that. It, the little gear motor that's there is so powerful, even though it's just like a, it's about a um, quarter to one third horsepower, but it's so powerful it can tear that piece of thing apart. You know, it, it don't hesitate, guys, because it's geared up to give you power, so more torque. All right? <coughs> and these. They, they, they really don't spin that fast. You know, different manufacturers, different speeds, but um, there are some, some um, ice machines where that thing, they can have it spinning as low as nine revolutions per minute. Only nine revolutions, so, you know, it's, it's not gonna take very much to freeze that auger onto that, um, Thing. So, <clears throat> there is a water supply reservoir that's 
it's never going to be, this is where ice comes out. So this reservoir is never going to be above that, mm -hmm. or as water will pour out. Where the water comes in, it's never going to be at the bottom. It's going to be slightly off, maybe about an inch and, inch and a half or so. And then at the real low bottom here, there is a drain normally. Now, this drain, because this machine makes, this is a flake ice, it makes ice continuously and harvests it. Water is not draining out here. But the moment you shut down this machine, the drain here has a drain, what we call it, solenoid on it. It's a drain solenoid. When you shut down this machine and it's, you restart it, this solenoid opens and drains all the water out of here, drains everything out of here while this is filling. This auger, the, the motor energizes and they start turning to clear whatever in case this has shut down for, due to a blackout. It's mm -hmm. gonna clear whatever ice was in here. No, before. And that's before the compressor kicks in, right? So it's set up to clear this out initially, drain all this crappy water that was settling there, drain out this, and then about um, one or two minutes into the cycle, it shuts down this drain, continue filling, and starts the ice making uh, starts a compressor. It's like a pre. It's like a pre-purge. Yes, only thing that we call is um, what they call it a uh, flush. Okay. Yeah, we flush the system. You know, purge is one when we want to get rid of unwanted, and it's more used with um, for chillers or or um, burner system for right. burner well, system. Same, but same. Principles. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a process same idea. before it starts the system up. Make same sure idea, you, different application. Right, get rid of the, the water that's sitting down there, make sure all the ice is pumped out before it starts. Yeah. Anyway, so, man. Yeah, I couldn't do this any better. No, I hope they can get it to rotate. Do they know these suckers? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this rotates and the ice comes out here. And this, of course, the gearbox is down here, and the, this is stainless steel, but it's not setting direct into the gearbox, guys. There is two shaft. This shaft here has a set of spline at the end. This shaft coming out to the gearbox has a set of spline, and we normally use a coupling. Now, this is stainless steel. The other shaft in the Gearbox is regular steel, but the coupling is rubber. No, in this case, the coupling is aluminum. Okay. So any excessive pressure here will cause that coupling to break. Mm -hmm. And it was designed to snap. <coughs> right? So if you go to one of these machines and you find this coupling is snap, there's a few things that could cause it. One of them, and you can find that out pretty fast. Up here, there's a bushing. Down here, there's a bushing. If that auger shakes like this, you need it. Bushing. It was offset, so it put unnecessary strain on that torsional strain. So it is going to snap that. You need to <coughs> change that, change the bushing up here, change the bushing down there. And make sure there is no shims, by the way. We do not use shims in these type of where she knows she was a this or this. Right. Yeah, so if you have to use shim in that. Something wrong. Something is wrong. It was All right? Yeah, so if it's not the bushing, it could be that this machine, for some reason, when it has shut down, let's say maybe it indicated the ice bin was full and it shut down and somebody went right away after it shut down and took ice out of the bin and lowered the level below the sensor and the machine kicks on, but it may not have gone into that porch as we call it, or the flush. Right. And compressor starts up right away it and freeze this right there. So the amount of ice in here was too much for this to scrape off. So your back pressure your, your back pressure was too much. Uh -huh. 
Now, would that trip a safety or would it just well, crack the there, coupling? There are safeties here to trip the motor because it, the motor has an overload sensor and it's, it's pretty sensitive to overload because it needs to be. Mm -hmm. But if that fails, it will crack the coupling. coupling. Right? Because that's designed to fail. The coupling, guys, is designed to fail. It's not designed to stay there and uh, wreck everything else. Would have right. made it a stronger material if they wanted it. Right. right, if they wanted it. And actually, they used to do that before, make out a strong material. And that motor was so strong, it used to snap the shaft, the shaft and the auger. And they decided, you know what? This, yeah, lead, <laughs> this is $2,500. That coupling is 10 bucks. <laughs> you know, I may, as well, I may as well design it so that it cup and fail. And you see, one of the reasons we can't use rubber, rubber will take up tension and kind of tend to twist. Right. No, we want constant speed. Because if that rubber twists, you get this kind of movement. Mm -hmm. Snapping movement, you don't want that. Alright? Now let's see if they have an animation. Ice down the wheel form on the inside of these two. Right there. And uh, that's how it comes out up there. Falls down into the chute. Come on, animate. Mm -hmm. So let me see that. All right, but anyhow, that's how the ice gets scraped off. Goes there, fills up the bin. And uh, now remember I told you the speed of that auger was about nine reps per minute? I said, that's the range, guys. Nine to 16 reps per minute. Anytime, it, if a machine is designed for nine, please do not expect it to do that. It's gonna break something. Leave it be at nine. Because some machine has a little sensor there, right on the coupling. They have a, um, we call it a proximity sensor, and it senses the movement of that auger. And the moment it goes up too fast, it's gonna shut it down. If it goes too slow, like if it goes to seven, it's gonna shut down the machine, because seven means you're straining, right? You're overloading that thing. And, you know, like, 11 means you're just going freewheeling without no load and that may indicate that the compressor is not cycling on so you're not making ice so these are the little things and uh, you see when that happening the machine shut down a little light will start blinking the amount of time it blink will tell you which condition it shut down on mm -hmm. if it blink twice it shut down and overload the condition. If it blink three times, it shut down because it's not seen any load. It's not making ice. <coughs> but just so they're protecting the auger. Yes, you are protecting the stainless steel and cylinder and the auger. And the gearbox, because that part that part of the ice machine costs like about seventy five Present the um, total total um, equipment cost. All right. Now, on the, how much is one of the gear reducers for that? Just the gear reducer. The gear I mean, box, that probably doesn't go bad that bad, right? The gearbox itself don't strip because um, they they're cheap. Because what happen if they should strip? They're made out of plastic, the and they're designed to strip. Made of plastic? Yes, because uh, it's metal plastic metal. So even if you overload it to max, it's going to strip the plastic here without damaging anything and you can just take the box and replace, it down here. replace that one here. It's, it's designed for you to fix. Okay. All right. Just Before see. time it used to be totally sealed guys. Mm -hmm. And you used to go by have to replace the whole gear box. But not now. Now they, you can buy every little thing. And right up to a little pin. Um, and these machines, there's a little pin about that length. Exactly that length, three eighths of an inch long, and it's the thickness of a two penny nail. Uh -huh. 
they sell that. It, it costs, um, my last price was $1.98. But they sell those little pins too. So you, you can imagine what they would have done. They would have made, because they have done to the last little pin they are making to you know, sell to you. <coughs> so he said the assembly is prone to failure at times. So these days, um, I don't see much of the whole gear assembly failing. Right? It's a, if you should take care of this part here, where the August bushing is okay, you, if you find it's wobbling, then, and I recommend like six months check in. All you do is take off the top of the cap here, the ice comes out, and you shake the auger. If it, if it wobbles a little bit, change the bushing, and it's not hard to change, you know. Um, it probably costs, materially maybe like 50 odd bucks for the two bushings. And your labor might be two hours, which is 250 bucks. <coughs> Unless you want to charge cheaper. And the only, the only time you will try cheaper is if you do not have confidence in your ability. Okay? If you have confidence in your ability, you charge top dollars. And when they, when they complain, say, hey, you know, there is a lot more. Okay, go call them, don't call me. Well, of course, guys, please, I do not do customer service for the simple reason. Uh -huh. What I just said applies to me only. <laughs> All right. Bottom line is, it's my business. I can do what the heck I want with it. So, but if it's customer service, of course, they tell the customer is always right. And they, me, I tell them, yes, you are right. So leave me alone, right? You have the right to call somebody else. Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah, and I have the right to refuse to do your job. You know. So, you know. This is America, you know, you have, it's written in the Constitution that you have a right to be whatever you want to be, even if a damn asshole. Yeah. You know? And there are a lot of people out there. Yeah. Water fill system on a float, dual, there is always a dual uh, float switch and, and um, the water control valve. Uh, that reservoir, let me see something here. Okay. If you're gonna copy that, copy it, then we're gonna break and uh, that should take five minutes. If it takes less, fine, then I'm gonna switch. But the, the float, when it calls for water, it opens a solenoid valve. These things are not mechanical float, like in a bathroom float, toilet bowl float. It is, let <coughs> the switch, the board senses when I am, that switch is telling it that, listen, my water level is low and then the controller board energizes the water fill solenoid, it fills right up to the second float, where, which is the high level float, then it, that float is going to signal to the board here and pull, shut down the solenoid. Just like a steam boiler. Yes. So that's what, the float does not control the water, the water <coughs> flow directly, it controls the operation of a water fill solenoid. And, um, God, those, those with the mechanical float, they're going out of style. You will still see them, guys, because there are some people out there who still has ice machine that are 30 years, 35 years old. Uh, I was unfortunate enough to work on a couple of them. <laughs> because, yeah, you can't get parts now for them. You have, to, you have to kind of like figure out, okay, God, what the heck am I going to do now? You know, and you, you fabricate stuff and you rig up stuff, and then you put two band aid. No, is there people that have parts for these things that they advertise that they have old? They have parts for these machines. Yeah, but yeah. what do they cost? Well, I'm saying, but some people will pay big money if it's yes, they're um, buying a machine. Some people do pay big money for it. No, because there's a guy out east that has like rare parts for forces that are not common. And if you go to Plumber Supply out east and they tell you, oh, we don't carry that, but call this guy. And it's at his own house. 
his passion thing. Yeah, he has, he has <laughs> vows and stuff that, uh, that people just don't carry. It's you know, all plumbing stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like, there's a place on Brentwood Road. Guys, yeah. turn on the yeah, electric. I need yeah. replacement plug. Hold on, do that on the Oh, you can see turn it oh, yeah, on. Yeah, right? Island replacement oh. parts? Yes. They got some things sometimes, but they don't go all out to get you the old stuff, you know? They can get stuff for you. Right, yeah, yeah. They don't stock it. But they can get no, they can get it. it. Sometimes they stock it. Well, if you're lucky, because, I mean, that's an old place, you know? If a Babylon plumbing supply had some stuff, I hope it is worth it. Babylon don't carry much of forces. So. No, but they have some things in the industry that. Uh, 